Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. St. Mark's is a historic congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. We are conveniently located in Myers Park on Queens Road, just south of Charlotte's Uptown and adjacent to the Duke Mansion and the greenery of Edge Hill Park. St. Mark's Church building is easy to find with its marble Christus Victor, while inside, the mid-century design of the sanctuary reaches upward, inspiring us with Christ's blessing and beautiful stained glass windows featuring all the people of God in all their diversity. There is a place for you at St. Mark's.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. As we journey through the season of Easter, today we hear Jesus call himself the true vine and say that we are his branches as we abide in his love. God's love casts out fear empowering us to bear the fruit of love for others in this world. A warm welcome to any visitors who are worshiping with us this morning. Your presence among us is a blessing to us. I have a couple announcements as we begin. Please uh, see the bulletin for details. The annual men's group breakfast is coming up on Saturday, May 11th. Next Sunday at the 1030 service, uh, we will remember, commemorate, and offer a prayer of blessing on the 10th anniversary of St. Mark's Soup Kitchen Ministry. Our soup kitchen has been going strong for 10 years, and I probably, uh, folks who have been involved in that could probably count on one hand the number of Thursdays in 10 years that have been, had to cancel or be called off. It is such a ministry of love and dedication toward the hungry and homeless in our community, and we will re remember them in our service next week. Finally, if you are joining us online and have not been to St. Mark's before or haven't been in a while, please consider joining us for worship on Sunday morning at 8.30 or 10.30 or call us or e email us in the church office that we might be able to connect with you and get to know you. We've come to worship our Lord. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remembering the waters of holy baptism, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from Acts in the eighth chapter. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was, was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the town that he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever.
dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people to learn the Lord. Proclaim to them the Lord has acted. The second reading is from the first letter of John in the fourth chapter. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness at the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in us. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who don't, do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every, bra every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Today's readings all center upon the image of abiding in God's love. Abiding in Christ, we are to be his branches. He is the true vine and we are to be his branches, reaching ever outward with love for this world and for all people, welcoming our sisters and brothers into Christ's body, the church, with God's love for this world. Today's readings also echo Jesus' words from last week. And if you weren't here last week, it was that passage about being the good shepherd. And Jesus said, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, so there will be one flock with one shepherd. The story today in the book of Acts, chapter 8, about the Ethiopian eunuch is a story reminding us of the Good Shepherd who seeks out, loves, and welcomes all people. The story of the Ethiopian eunuch is significant because it records the first known baptism of an ethnically black African person. And it also records the first known baptism of a foreigner, someone who was not Jewish. However, biblical scholars, so this is, I'm in the footnotes now, the biblical scholars over the years have also remembered Cornelius' conversion and baptism and say that because the Ethiopian eunuch was in Jerusalem to worship and was reading Isaiah, that he was really a proselyte to the, Christ, to the Jewish faith. So sometimes Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 is also sometimes mentioned as the first foreigner to be baptized. But nevertheless, the baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch must have been considered significant because it occupies a really special place in the Acts narrative prior to both Cornelius' conversion and baptism and prior to Paul's conversion. In addition, the Ethiopian's gender as a eunuch prohibited him from participating in the assembly of God. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1, prohibited eunuchs from entering the assembly of the Lord. And yet, Isaiah chapter 56 also prophesied of a day when both foreigners and eunuchs would be welcomed into the house of the Lord because God's house was to be called a house of prayer. For all peoples. As modern people, we really no longer have a gender identity category for eunuchs. As this passage of, yet this passage of Acts is profoundly relevant to our own time. Because foreigners and those whose gender and identity are perceived as different have not been and often are still not today always welcomed into the assembly of the Lord. The baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch is a reminder that ethnicity, gender, and identity were culturally normed in Hebrew scriptures and that in Isaiah, 
God's word through Isaiah sought to move beyond that so that God's love would be expanded to include all people, people of all nations and all identities. And so Isaiah looked forward to a day when foreigners and eunuchs would be welcomed because the house of the Lord was to be a house of prayer for all peoples. The story of the Ethiopian eunuch is well known and is read usually at this time of the year during Easter. The Ethiopian eunuch had traveled to Jerusalem to worship, but because of the prohibition against eunuchs entering the temple in Deuteronomy chapter 23, the Ethiopian eunuch probably worshipped from afar, perhaps outside of the temple gate. Imagine his feeling at being interested in Yahweh, at reading Isaiah chapter 53 about the suffering servant, and yet not being able to enter into the assembly. And so in fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, the Holy Spirit sent Philip to this man, who was the treasurer of the queen of Ethiopia. Acts tells us that this man wrote, rode in a chariot, a sign of his wealth, power, and position in the world. When Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch, he was reading chapter 53 of Isaiah about the suffering servant, who of course is Jesus Christ, the one who himself had been rejected, the one who himself had been crucified outside the gate. And so Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? And the Ethiopian eunuch replied, how can I unless someone guides me? Philip's question is also a good question for all of us. Do we always understand what we are reading in Holy Scripture? And so as they rode, Philip proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ to the Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch commanded his chariot to stop upon seeing water and said to Philip, there is water. What is to prevent me? From being baptized. And so they both got out of the chariot, got into the water, and Philip baptized him in Jesus' name. Philip welcomed a man whose body and personhood as both a foreigner and a eunuch had been rejected from God's assembly. Do we understand what we are reading? The Easter message of the church is one of unconditional love that in Jesus Christ, the words of Isaiah 56 are fulfilled. Jesus is the good shepherd, gathering sheep from other folds into one flock, into one house of prayer, into his body, the church, where all are forgiven and welcomed and called beloved children of God in holy baptism. In today's gospel, Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. We are the branches of Jesus Christ reaching ever outward with the Easter message of God's love for all people. And this is the fruit we are called to bear. Abiding in Christ, we are called to preach the gospel and welcome all people into God's house in Jesus' holy name. Today's epistle reading from 1 John reads, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. The fruit we are called to bear is this abiding love of God for others, especially those who have not heard or who have not been welcomed into the assembly of the Lord. I think all of us do it in so many ways, subtle and unconscious. We can hold people at arm's length people that our culture tells us we shouldn't like, or people our nation tells us are foreigners or are our enemies or are different from us or are not like us. And yet the words of Scripture counter all of that, calling us to love others with that perfect love that drives out fear. Early Christians didn't only just love people who were like themselves. They loved and welcomed those who were different, the stranger, the foreigner, the outsider, because in their neighbors of differing ethnicities, genders, and identities, they knew they were also welcoming God's family. That is how Christianity began to move around the Mediterranean by having a 
dialogue with the difference of cultures and peoples and nations and preaching the good news that all people are beloved children of God. Again, 1 John writes, we love because he first loved us. The love that we feel for our family, the love that we feel for our friends, the love that we feel for those who we call our family, those friends that you get to call your family. That love that we feel is a gift. It is not our creation. It is a gift that God plants into us to share with others. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate a brother or sister are liars. For those who do not love a sister or brother whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. This is the fruit of love that we are called to bear in feeding the hungry that we set tables for every week in this church in visiting those in need that so many of our ministries do, and in welcoming those who are different, welcoming the stranger, which was the ethical center of Judaism in the Old Testament. Again, 1 John writes, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. You know, more than at any other time in recent memory, it feels like we live in a world that is overrun by a fear of difference. We're afraid of people that we are told are different from us, people that are foreign or people with different identities. Human beings demonize sisters and brothers whom they have seen and in the same breath say that they love God whom they have not seen. First John continues to be relevant to our human community today. Fear paralyzes humanity from doing the good that we know we should do. Fear robs us of our human courage and our humanity to love others as God has loved us. And yet we are told, we're encouraged today in the season of Easter, that perfect love casts out fear. Those who trade in fear, those who spread fear, are operating on borrowed time because they do not know love and do not know God for God is love. Philip's question is also a question for all of us as we struggle with those difficult parts of Scripture. Do we understand what we are reading? The gospel of Jesus Christ spread across the ancient world because Christians understood and shared and lived out its message. Cultural, ethnic, national, gender, and religious difference were welcomed with love, repentance, and acceptance. The baptismal text of Galatians 3, which we all know so well, says it very, very well. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. In the waters of holy baptism, what the world says about us, who we are ethnically, nationally, sexually, culturally, is forgiven, loved, and accepted by the God who calls each of us children of God, beloved children. Jesus, the good shepherd, gathers all nations into one house of prayer of all peoples and nations. As Easter people, we rejoice in the words, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He lives to bind us together with bonds of love that cannot be broken by fear because perfect love casts out all fear. Welcome one another as Jesus Christ has welcomed you. Welcome all people for the glory of God. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us be together in prayer. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need of good news. God of life, through your Son, we, the church, are branches bearing fruit for ourselves and to share with others. R remind us to remain in you so that we might bear fruit for the rest of our lives and show ourselves to the world as recipients of your love and disciples of your word, God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator God, renew the face of the earth, showering it with your goodness, grace, and abundance. In this season of planting, bless fields that vines and branches might bear much fruit. Bless farmers, their families, and the communities that grow the food that reaches our tables. May we also always share our food with others, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for nations and people whose lives and communities have been destroyed by war, strife, and hunger. Grant to the leaders of all nations courage to be peacemakers who work together to bring an end to war. Guide international relief agencies to deliver food, medical care, and shelter for all in need. And help us always to pray for peace and act for justice in this world. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Holy Comforter, grant healing to the sick and comfort to the dying. Bless all caregivers and medical personnel and protect all who serve others, first responders, the police, the fire department, and the military. Into your hands, O Lord, we entrust our loved ones, Mark, Patty, Jared, Michael, Julie, Gray, Jetty, Angie, Linda, Drew, Norma, Laura, Jean, Ken, Tanner, Christopher, Eileen, Danny, Mindy, Louisa, Ben, Tina, Martha, Ingrid, Shirley, Jimmy, Roxy, Bill, Sergey, Arlene, Oakley, David, Carl, Danielle, Rachel, Joseph, Virginia, David, and Jay. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you inspire us to feed the hungry and care for those in need. Bless St. Mark's ministries to provide food and essentials for our neighbors, for refugees, for the displaced, and for the homeless. Through you, we can be a beacon of hope for the hopeless and a vessel for them to know your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of love, you sent your only son into the world to die on a cross and rise again so that we might live. Through you, we understand the true meaning of love, of sacrifice, of selflessness. Inspire us to love one another the way you have loved us and to live for one another the way you live in us. 
and bring us at the end with all the saints into your kingdom. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my, bep, in, in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.
Please join us for worship at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. on Sundays with inspiring music and talented musicians as we gather around God's Word and celebrate the sacraments together. We are a congregation that helps children, youth, and families grow together in Christ. With events for children and youth, a confirmation program, educational activities, mission trips and retreats to camps like Luther Ridge that help young people and families grow in faith and service to others. St. Mark's is a place for families and people of all generations to grow together in Christ. St. Mark's is a church with a servant's heart. Each Thursday, St. Mark's Soup Kitchen feeds our neighbors. We also partner with local schools and nonprofit organizations. We participate in Kairos Prison Ministry Weekends, sending cookies as a sign of our love. We follow Jesus in mission, offering food, shelter, and hope to those in need. And we are blessed by local artists, musicians, and ecumenical relationships. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. Please join us for worship and stay with us to serve Jesus Christ by helping others discover God's amazing grace. For more information about worship and service opportunities, please visit us at stmarkscharlotte.org. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. May the peace of Christ be